hit it. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion fits? Different types who wear a day coat, pant with stripes, and cut away coat perfect fits. Welcome to Teacup for One. Said I give? My name is Matt and I have two degrees. Well, we've watched Frankenstein. We've watched Bride of Frankenstein. So of course the only film that makes sense to follow would be Son of Frankenstein, but bleep that, I want a comedy. So for today, we are talking about the 1974 Mel Brooks classic, Young Frankenstein, starring Gene Wilder. It's pronounced Frankenstein. This is widely considered to be one of the funniest films of all time. The AFI, American Film Institute, actually ranked it as number 13 of their like 100 years, 100 laughs list or series or whatever. And over time, I've slowly begun to appreciate how funny this movie actually is. My first introduction to Mel Brooks was through Spaceballs, and that's like a totally different brand of humor. It's much more over the top. There's a lot of like references and in-jokes to other movies and other franchises. And the comedy in Young Frankenstein is a lot subtler. It still has like the Mel Brooks zaniness, but it's a lot more understated. And I think a lot of that might actually have to do with Gene Wilder, because I noticed that Gene Wilder actually has a writing credit. And I read that Gene Wilder actually had to veto Mel Brooks doing one of his uh, usual cameo appearances because that wasn't in keeping with the style of humor that they were going for with this movie. Yeah, so like, I don't want to say that the comedy in Young Frankenstein is more thought out or necessarily like better or more intellectual or anything than in the other Mel Brooks films, but they definitely had a vision with Young Frankenstein, and they stuck with it. A vision to just really find the humor that was already present in those Universal Frankenstein movies. And like, they went for it, all the way down to insisting that the movie be shot on black and white film stock. So yeah, like I said, the humor in Young Frankenstein is a lot drier than what I'm used to from a Mel Brooks film. But it is so much funnier when you go into it with Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein just fresh in your mind. So today, I want to look at the top five funniest moments in Young Frankenstein when you understand the references. Now, just to clarify, these are just the top five funniest moments when you get the references, not the top five funniest parts of the film, because we already know what those are. What knockers! Oh. But thank you, Doctor. What sounds like uh, to give! Say da give. Give him a set a give. Set a give? Uh, what? Igor, would you give me a hand with the bags? Certainly. You take the blonde and I'll take the one in the tie then. Set a give. Anyway, yeah. No, these are just five moments that are immensely funnier when you get what they're referring to. So, that said, let's start. Number five. It was somebody else's brain. Who? Abby. Someone. Abby normal. Are you saying that I put an abnormal brain into a seven and a half foot long, 54 inch wide gorilla? What? Is that what you're telling me? Wait. Okay, it could actually just be because I saw Young Frankenstein before I saw the Universal Studios Frankenstein, but the whole brain sequence overall to me is just hilarious. The fact that there's a brain labeled abnormal brain, don't use this one, is just not too far off from what actually happens in the Universal Studios Frankenstein, but you're allowed to laugh at this one. Actually, everything that Igor does in this movie is hilarious. He steals this film. You must be Igor. Now it's pronounced Igor. But they told me it was Igor. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? <laughs> okay, and actually that brings me to number four. My grandfather used to work for your grandfather. <laughs> How nice. Of course, the rates have gone up. Of course. 
Okay, this moment might not even actually be that funny, but one thing that's always low-key bothered me about these old-timey horror movies is that the mad scientists always have these lab assistants that just seem to be there, like working for free or out of loyalty or something. So to me, it's just so hilarious. Like this one brief exchange where the mad scientist is having like a fee negotiation with the lab assistant. <laughs> Just like, the rates have gone up, okay. Number three, Madeline Kahn as the Bride of Frankenstein. Do, 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 do. So, Madeline Kahn's character Elizabeth eventually falls for the monster and then like they get married and everything. And the hairstyle is very clearly like 100% a takeoff on Elsa Lancaster's hair in Bride of Frankenstein. But what I really love is the added detail <laughs> that on their wedding night, part of her foreplay is just hissing at him. And like that's just so great because one of the things I discovered when I was researching for uh, my Bride of Frankenstein video is that Elsa Lancaster decided that her character, the bride, should hiss. And she was inspired by the swans in Regent Park because swans are like these beautiful, ethereal creatures, but they are vicious, evil little things. And the closer you get to them, then the more violent they get. And they'll just look at you and go, Number two, Gene Hackman as Harold the Blind Man who tries to befriend Frankenstein's creature. A visitor is all I ask. A temporary companion to help me pass a few short hours in my lonely life. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Like, this is... This is brilliant because Gene Hackman's performance is like almost verbatim what the actor does in Bride of Frankenstein, just in terms of his almost like pathetic generosity. Like seriously, the guy is so over hospitable. He's like, come in my friend, come in. I have soup. Oh, and I have bread. Oh, and I have cigars. Two, I saved for a special occasion. Where where are you going? I was going to make espresso. And I mean, it's it's terrible, but the way that the entire scene plays out with like this blind character serving soup to the monster and the monster's trying to make sure that he gets the soup but then it still pours in his lap. It just, it's awful and it's hilarious and it's so good. And finally, the number one funniest moment in Young Frankenstein when you get the reference. The flower girl scene. Oh, I love my pretty little flowers. Okay, you know how I feel about this scene in the original Frankenstein film, so I am 100% here for a parody. The fact that she's like doing the flower thing at a well, it has such an incredible setup because you're just like, oh, the monster's gonna throw her in the well, but no, 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 that's just a red herring. And then they're building the suspense and the parents are like, oh no, where is she? Where is our daughter? Then they go back out into the playground and then she's like, now play with me. We're gonna play on the teeter-totter. And he teeters her up into the sky and she flies into her bed safe and sound and the parents are just like, oh, everything's normal. She's asleep in her bed. It's just like, it's so funny because it's playing with all of our expectations. And it is actually closer, based on my labor-intensive Wikipedia research, to the Mary Shelley novel where the creature doesn't actually drown or kill anybody. He in fact saves a little girl from drowning. So, good job, Mel Brooks. You actually did your research. All right, friends. So, there you have it. Short, sweet, and simple. The five moments in Young Frankenstein that are funnier when you get the references. For now, that concludes yet another episode of the Teacup 401 Spooky Movie Marathon. Let me know in the comment section down below, what is your favorite part of Young Frankenstein. Or if you haven't seen Young Frankenstein, just tell me what your favorite Mel Brooks movie is. And if you want to follow me for the rest of my Halloween movie marathon, we have less than a week to go. I think we're going to make it. But you'll never know if you don't subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it's super easy. All you have to do is click on my face. Thank you for joining me again today, everyone. My name is Matt and I have two degrees. And that's the T cup for one. Oh, I love my pretty little flower. <laughs> oh.